In our community, we speak frequently about the glory and splendor of the 25th dynasty of Egypt, also known as the Kushite Empire. This period in Nile Valley history is sometimes referred to as the African Renaissance because of how the Kushites restored Nile Valley culture and established numerous building projects. It was a very interesting time in Nubian history, to say the least, one that's memorable and noteworthy. However, we seldom discuss the details concerning the success and the failure of the last Kushite ruler of Egypt and how his expulsion from Egypt by the Assyrians led to an even stronger Kush. What up African world, it's home team here and welcome back to another video of African history, culture, and worldview. By supporting this channel on Patreon, you're helping in the creation of these videos and supporting this content. If you'd like access to full courses and sources, or you simply want to show your support, you may do so by clicking the Patreon link in the description box below. One of my favorite moments in ancient African history is the Kushite expansion along the Nile Valley. This moment in time actually taught us a lot of things about the relationship between Kush and Egypt, and even about the ideology of ancient African people. This was the only time in African history, or perhaps even world history, where a foreign group of people conquered a region not to destroy it, but to revitalize it. Because of this purpose, the Kushite pharaohs seemingly found it easier to forgive their enemies and occasionally place them in positions of power within the empire. Many of the Kushite rulers won the hearts of the various people throughout the Nile Valley, which was certainly not an easy task. We know of the Kushite rulers such as King Pai, Taharqa, and perhaps even King Shabaka, but we know little to nothing about King Tanutamun. Even though he was the last Kushite pharaoh, he dared to be great, and he afforded the Kushites one last shot at glory. During the latter end of King Taharqa's rule in Egypt, Egypt was divided between the Assyrians in the north, or the Delta region, and the Kushites in the more southern region, in Thebes. Taharqa was able to successfully repel any more incursions maintaining Kushite dominion in the south, or upper Egypt. When Taharqa died at Napata in 664 BC, his nephew, Tanu Tamun, assumed the full title of Lord of Two Lands. Effectively, the 25th dynasty was almost over, at least in terms of controlling all of Egypt. Yet Pharaoh Tanutamun placed the Egyptian double crown on his head with the blessings of Amun of Jebel Barkal, and set out to avenge the defeat of his maternal uncle Taharqa. We really have to commend Tanutamun for attempting such a dangerous mission. He was determined to win back Kushite glory. To be honest, he was perhaps the most determined Kushite ruler. He must have carried an enormous burden as the weight of Nile Valley history and culture rested on his shoulders. All the work his relatives had put in could fall under his watch. Via hindsight, it would have been easier for Tanu Tamun to just keep southern Egypt with Thebes as his capital because these were the boundaries that his uncle Taharqa had secured and the Assyrians seemed busy dealing with their own affairs at the time. But again, the young Tanu Tamun sought to restore in full the two lands. The Kushites tell us that Tanu Tamun had a prophetic dream which coincided with the political situation in Egypt. He dreamed of two serpents, one on his right and the other on his left. These serpents were identified as the double Kushite crown. His dream was interpreted as meaning that the south land belongs to the Kushites, but that he must seize the northern lands and take back Memphis and the Delta. Tana Tamun mobilized his army in Kush and traveled down the Nile on his way to northern Egypt, stopping to worship the local gods at Napata, Elephantine, and Thebes. When Tana Tamun finally arrived in Memphis, he engaged in battle against what he called the Children of Weakness, who were the Assyrians and their allies. The puppet ruler Necho of Sais was reportedly killed in this battle, according to Herodotus. When Tanatamun sailed northwards to encounter his Assyrian enemies, Tanatamun tells us that they hid in their towns and he besieged them. The attack against the Assyrians stationed in Memphis is corroborated with Assyrian texts as well. According to Tanatamun, the Kushites drove the Assyrians out of Egypt altogether, and after driving out the Assyrians, the local Delta rulers surrendered to him in full. Upon hearing about the Assyrian defeat in Egypt, the Assyrian ruler at the time months later mobilized his troops to end Kushite ambition once and for all, driving the Kushites back south and eventually taking Thebes. 
Upon the taking of Thebes, the Assyrians deported the inhabitants and took much wealth and other treasures. The looting and destruction of Thebes was said to be one of the greatest catastrophes of the ancient world and was remembered for quite some time afterward in literature. The actual fate of Tanatamun is not known, however. It's not clear if he engaged in battle with the Assyrians or returned home after taking the Delta region just before the Assyrian invasion. But we do know that after the Assyrian conquest of Thebes, the 25th dynasty of Egypt had ended under Tanutamun. The Assyrians at the time were no doubt among the greatest military forces in the world, and Tanutamun's fight against them was an honorable one. The Kushites ironically became a powerhouse after the Assyrian invasion of Egypt. After the reign of Tanutamun and the end of the 25th dynasty, they continued to dominate Nubia and rule from their capital of Napata. One of the last rulers of Napata before the Kushite capital was moved to Meroe was King Nastasin. A ruler from Upper Egypt had clear ambitions to conquer Kush as he believed the might of the 25th dynasty had dwindled, but he was very wrong. Nastasin's monument calls the leader of this Egyptian invasion Cambusitan. Unfortunately for the Egyptians, the Kushites were never again going to be a colony of Egypt, so Nastasin absolutely crushed the invasion with relative ease, and Nastasin claims to have taken many fine boats and other war treasures during this victory. Now the end of the 25th dynasty may be seen as the end of a glorious Kush, but ironically, this downfall ushered the Nubian kingdom into its golden age militarily. After facing such a powerful foe, the Kushites were never again defeated wholesale by a non-African force. The difficult and unnavigable Nubian terrain married with fierce Kushite resistance halted the ambition of the Persians and even the greatest military force in ancient history, the Romans. The last pharaoh, as we'll call him, was not the end of the powerful Nile Valley Empire of Kush. It was simply a transition into a more powerful period one that took on even more powerful foes and came out on top. It's time we look at the fall of the 25th dynasty and the reign of Tanatamun, not as the end, but merely the beginning of classical Kushite civilization. Well, I'm all out, guys. If you like these videos and want to help in its continued production, consider supporting the home team on Patreon.com. The link is in the description box below. Know thyself. Remember your ancestors. Peace. Hey! 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 Hey!